Hi everyone, welcome back to the origami design class. It's been a while, and uh, today I'm going to talk about what's probably my most favorite origami design software. And this is one that I use basically in every design nowadays, and it's called Ori Editor. Now, Ori Editor is a software that you use to draw crease patterns, but not only that, but you can also use it when you're designing to iterate through structures and, and stuff like that. It's um, mostly like a scratch paper, like a notebook, rather than any like calculations that it can do. But regardless, it's really useful, and I'm, today I'm going to show you how to use it. Now, before I show you how to use it, uh, I just want to show a little bit of like what the scratch paper might look like when you're designing with it. I also want to show how fast it can draw. So to do that, I'm going to redraw this crease pattern from a few videos ago. Here's the, this complete crease pattern drawn within like 8 minutes-ish, which maybe doesn't seem super fast, but um, considering that that's about 680 lines, I think that's pretty good. Now let's talk about how to install Ori Editor. So unlike the previous generations of Ori, Hime, and stuff, it's actually quite simple. So you can actually find the Ori Editor page just by googling this Ori Editor, and it'll be the first result here. If not, I'll link this, this pretty simple link, orieditor.github.io. So there's a lot of information on this page, uh, you take a look. Um, what I recommend is you can go to the Downloads page, and either Windows, Linux, Macs, or whatever you're using. I'm on a Mac. If you're using Windows, uh, I'd recommend to use the .exe or the .zip. The jar file is a little harder to use, um, but it's also there. For Mac, I like using the .zip, um, so I'm just going to download here. And if you go to your Downloads folder, you'll see that uh, if you just try to open it, it will give you this error. So don't move it to trash. Uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to run this command here. So let's, let's copy this to a clipboard. Control-C. And then you can go to Downloads, Show and Enclosing Folder. So now that you have your Downloads folder right here, you can uh, New Terminal at Folder. And in the terminal, you can paste the command. Uh, it doesn't really say anything that happened, but now that when you go back to your downloads folder and you try to open up Orienta, it works. Um, so yeah, it's a little out of the way, but um, once you figure that out, it's pretty easy. There's a lot of buttons. It looks very intimidating, um, but when you actually try using it, it's actually not as hard as it looks. So um, the first thing you need to know is just how to control the canvas. All these buttons on top are the things you can do. So this button here is the pan, so you click on this and then you can like move your thing around. This is zoom in, zoom out, and you can also use your scroll wheel if you have a mouse. These two are rotate, pretty simple. You can also go to the view panel. Uh, you can like hide the panels. You can usually the right panel, you don't really need too often, but it's nice to have. Um, you can also do dark mode, which I think is pretty nice. Just make sure to click yes. Um, so I guess I can continue in dark mode from here. Uh, other things you can do is you can increase the thickness of your, your lines. Um, I usually like using the second thickness. Now the second thing you need to know is how to draw, add, and change lines. So this tool right here is probably the, the tool you're going to use the most. Uh, I like to set a keybind to space because spacebar is easy to press and you're going to use this tool all the time. So you just click a point and you drag and it will make a line to the next point. Right now I'm in mountain crease mode. If you want to change to valley, you click here, and this is valley. Um, what's interesting about Orienta, other softwares aren't quite like this, is that the edge of the paper is actually a, just another type of crease. So you can actually delete the edge of the paper, you can like go something like this to make it like a rectangle. You can also make the grid like really large, like this, and then um, you know use it as scratch paper, like I showed you in the beginning. So you can just like draw like new rectangles outside and like. It's like a notebook, it's very free. 
What you also want to know is that to delete is very easy is you use your right click and then whatever is inside your box will be deleted. You can also use the, this change button here, which I think the default hotkey is C uh, to, to change it. So anything that's highlighted will change direction. Lastly, you also have auxiliary lines. So auxiliary lines are these like these light blue lines and they don't actually fold. They're just there for reference markers. So another very important tool to know is this button up here that says CAMV. Uh, and so when you have it, it will highlight all your flat foldability errors. The different symbols mean different things. So this one is, you can, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's blue because it needs a valley. The rest are red because it needs another mountain. Um, but in any case, it will highlight when you have an error. And so when you have no errors, it will show up as green and then you're ready to fold. So to fold, uh, the default button should be F, I think, but in either case, the button's down here. You can press it and it will calculate the folded shape for you. Um, also, you can do uh, middle click to pan around, and you can also pan, pan around only the folded object if you want. You can also use this button here to move the thing around, um, and the controls are basically the same. You can like rotate it, zoom in, zoom out, you can change the color of what, how it shows up, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then to make it disappear, you press the crumple button. There's a lot of different tools you can use in Orienta. Uh, for example, there's like a, a line that does perpendicular things. There's uh, angle bisector tools. Um, so all of these tools have their own, all these buttons have their own thing. Most of these ones are pretty useful. And so if you need to figure them out, all you, what you can do is you can toggle help and then you can click on the tool. So let's say I want to know how to draw a perpendicular line. With this help box, it will tell me how to do it. So select a point, select a crease line B, and then it will new line will be perpendicular to this. So um, I don't think I ha will need to tell you all these things. You can probably just figure them out on your own. The last thing that you really need to know is how to save files and import and export files. So if you go to File, you can Save As. It will give you two options. You can save as a CP or a .ORI. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can use .ORI for local files that you just want to use in Orienta, and it'll save everything. So including like your circles and other auxiliary random stuff. Um, it also save like the position of your canvas and your like display settings and things like that. CP files are much more simpler. It'll only save the lines. But the, the good thing about the CP file, .cp is a very universal file type. So basically any origami software out there should be able to read .cp. Um, additionally, any like version of every software will also, because sometimes, uh, in the past, like previous, like really old .ori files aren't really compatible anymore or stuff like that. Things could go wrong, but .cp is very reliable. If you want to share it with other people, usually .cp is the way to go because you don't know really what version they're using. But if you just want to save it for yourself, um, .ori is generally pretty nice. So then you can save it as a thing. And, and then when you want to open it, you can um, do open recent, open. You can also import, add things. So let's say I want to import um, something in. There you go. Now the last thing I want to talk about is keybinds. Um, so this is a, these, this is the map of the keybinds that I use, and as you can tell, they're all in the left hand. So that way, the right hand never needs to leave the mouse. I feel like this is a pretty efficient way. Uh, you saw earlier that it draws pretty smoothly. Uh, you can experiment for yourself what you like for your keybinds. Um, but if you forgot how to do keybinds, what you do is you just pick a tool, and then you right click, change keystroke and then you press the key. Hopefully this will help you draw faster and uh, having a fast creature patterns drawing software makes a really huge difference when you're designing. It allows you to iterate a lot and prototype uh, uh, and also share your creature patterns with other people. Anyways, so I think that's all I have for this video. Uh, if you have other questions about Ori Editor, there's actually a Discord server which I'll link below where you can ask questions, submit feedback and bug reports, all those things to help Ori Editor become a better software. Um, huge thanks to all the people working on Orienta, the, the dev team who is behind this, really making a big difference in the origami community. And with that, I think I'll leave it off here. Happy folding, happy crease pattern drawing, and I'll see you in the next video.